This video has the best cheap undervalued so rare players for managers new and old looking to get their strategy just right and in place ahead of the 23-24 season. I did a video called the 10 so rare cards beginners must buy on the road to glory series and the so rare scouts and managers from all over the world have came together to nominate their ultimate best standalone value pick in the hopes of winning this limited Etienne Vassin. For the Road to Glory giveaway today, what I want to see from you in the comment section is your favourite transfer of the summer so far. The one with the best SO5 implications, the zero that's went to hero that you're looking forward to seeing captaining and leading your SO5 teams next season. If you're new to so rare and you haven't even started yet, there's a link in the description in this video that'll get you a free limited once you've bought five from the market. It's the best way to sign up. It's the way everyone signs up. And if you start playing so rare without clicking on that link to get your free card once you've bought five from the market, then you're one card worse off at everyone else. By clicking on that link and signing up directly, you support all the content here at the channel and I thank you in advance if you do so. If you do get stuck or you need any help, also jump into the comment sections and I'll come and sort you out. If you want to see that other video I mentioned, the 10 so rare cards beginners must buy, that's linked in the description of this video as well as all the beginner content that you need if you're looking to find the how to play video and the scoring matrix and all that good stuff. At any point in the video today guys, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or you add a player to your watch list, then please do like and subscribe to the channel. We are pushing to get to 10,000 subscribers before the new European season and we cannot do that without your support. So please do like the video if you enjoy this stuff and if you want more, hit subscribe. Let's just get stuck into it. Now there is literally buckets of players that have been suggested for this video and the rules were simple. The best standalone player that you you would add into a beginner team to really buff it up, to push it over the line and to make it extra competitive. We're thinking about this being a road to glory team, it's a budget team, it's a beginner team and we're thinking about limiteds. But you at home, you may be looking for rares, you may be looking for super rares and all of these players are undervalued in the market at the moment. I was going to say in no particular order, okay, but the first two selections are in a particular order. As the video went on and as I had to try and juggle between the different players and teams and leagues that were all in, order went out the window. So it's a bit of a free for all, but the first two tie into the last video actually quite nicely. And the first one is Ethan Pinnock, who is the main centre-back for Brentford. He's got an L15, a 64. His limited card at the moment is currently under £8. And the Jamaica International, when he is playing for Brentford, has got really impressive scores. He's actually the bane of my life at the moment because I own a Christopher Iyer. But Ethan Pinnock is amazing at SO5. And when Brentford are in good form, this guy is the defensive player that stands head and shoulders above them all. The other one that's in some sort of order is his understudy is sort so5 wise in, in a roundabout way and that is a 33 year old ben me who's got an l5 a 60 an l15 a 52 out of 100 so pretty good averages for a center back he's half the price of an ethan pinnock and that's why i put them right next to each other and his so5 scores are not that different really um he's maybe not quite got the hundred that ethan pinnock's had before but his consistency definitely makes him just as viable of a proposition as ethan pinnock the reason those selections are relevant is because in the the first 10 cards you should be buying it's all about that goalkeeper it's all about the defensive play that these so rare scouts and managers that nominated ethan pinnock and ben me are thinking about because in so rare fantasy football you want to have to rely upon as minimal games as possible as a common train of thought and by lining up the goalkeeper with the defenders you can just then make sure if one team has a pretty good defensive performance you've got two players you've got two positions that will make benefit out of it now the next recommendation is a new one to me and it is salvatore esposito he is under 23 until 2025 he's currently 10 pound at the moment for unlimited and he will be playing in Serie b next year with spezia now if we can filter this by last time he was in Serie b you'll see he was Pretty handy, yeah. He was pretty good at this level of the game. And as far as under 23 players go, I'm expecting this season it to be a case of all of these second division cards, maybe like Salvatore here, who are going to be a little bit cheat code, maybe coming from a relegated side, or maybe they're at one of those other teams in the second division of Spain, France, Germany, Italy, or England, and they're maybe coming back from injury, or you know maybe some sort of other positive development has happened there. And I think when you look at those scores there, look at all those 70 pluses, couple of 80 pluses, and a 100 uh, for £10 for a limited card. <laughs> 
Uh, Salvatore Esposito is a fantastic under-23 shout, and I think for any beginner out there, that's an under-23 card you could build an under-23 budget lineup around. No two ways about it. Also in Serie B, but at the opposite end of the age range, is Fabio Barini. Now, Fabio Barini was recently in Turkey, and the team he was at, Fatih Karagumaruk, it changed a few managers, and a few things had happened over there, but... In the kind of, you know, one manager leave and another one coming in for a short time, Andrea Pirlo was the manager there and got a really fine tune out of the veteran Italian former Liverpool striker. And Andrea Pirlo is now the Sampdoria manager. Sampdoria, one of the biggest clubs traditionally in Italy, now find himself in Serie B. And Andrea Pirlo has picked up the phone to his wee pal Berini and said, come back to Italy and let's get back to Serie A together. And Berini, hey... The scores he was putting in, L15-65 in Turkey. The Turkish league is a really decent standard, particularly if you are a veteran player like Barini. To be able to bring these scores in, he's still operating at a really good level of the game. And as you can see here, a couple of 100s, a few 90 pluses, like half a dozen 90 pluses there, and a good bunch of 75 pluses. He does have those scores in those games where he will let you down, obviously. But for a striker card that can bring in this type of score in Turkey, moving to Serie B, that's a prospect at the right price of £17 for this forward card. I wouldn't mind that at all. And I think that would be a great striker that could really bang some huge scores for any beginner outfit out there or for any team looking to flesh out their, their depth options or cap options, whatever it might be out there. Fabio Berini could be a fantastic forward option this year. No two ways about it. Now, we were given this guy as another shout. Now, Turkish goalkeepers are always something that I air caution around, okay? But for a potentially under-23 playing goalkeeper, he's on loan at Fatih Karagumaruk. You know, it's one of these ones where, hey, if you wanted to play that game and you're a beginner, you want to take a bench goalkeeper who has a potential to become a starter. You want to take him for something quite cheap, like £12. £190 for a rare, see him start and flip him in the market, this is a guy you can look into further. Now for me, one of the guys that will firmly be in top 5 and top 10 lists at the end of the 23-24 season is going to be Jonas Hoffman. He is transferred to Leverkusen and under Xabi Alonso, who are also, you know, they're also retaining Florian Wirtz. They've also signed Boniface from... Um, USG having sold Diaby for mega money to Aston Villa. I think Leverkusen are the team to watch in this Bundesliga campaign this year. I think they could really be the one that upsets the apple cart and gets really, get, you know, really gets in amongst it and could go on to have a really glorious season. And a big player and a big part of that is going to be Jonas Hoffman. Uh, from his whole German career and his time at uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, I'm not sure if I've if he's played for somewhere before that, it feels like he's been a glad back forever. You know what you're getting. This guy works hard. He's a top end footballer on top of that as well. And he's a big game player. His L5 is 65, which is beautiful to say and beautiful to see. He's £18 for a limited at the moment. Under £200 for a rare is not to be sniffed at either. I think he does have midfielder and forward cards available. No, just midfielders. And look at that. And these guys, like I say, he's a big game player. It's well publicised in the Soria community that Hoffman turns up when the chips are down, when it's a big game and a team needs a hero. Hoffman is the guy that turns up and he just bangs. He just delivers. So Gladbach have actually been pretty terrible for the last two or three seasons, in my opinion. They've been thoroughly horrible to watch and to back in any way, shape or form. And for him to drop four 100s, in addition to that, three 90-plus scores, I think, is incredible. And I think in Leverkusen, there's no reason to think he cannot do that again for me and my money. So Jonas Hoffman at under £20, he has to be a contender to, to win the giveaway on this video for me. Now, there were some tips in here that made me think maybe they're just trying to get a wee bit of favouritism from, from yours truly. But in all fairness, John McGinn is a fantastic value budget best pick card it's six pound for a limited 64 pound for a rare you don't need me to tell you anything but john mcginn his scores there are average out of 100 of course they are but we know aston villa are in the ascendancy we know john mcginn is a key player for unai emery and you know we didn't get to see a consistent so5 makeup from aston villa or john mcginn in the second half of last season there but i thoroughly expect we get a great version of John McGinn in this coming season. And the Aston Villa under Unai Emery are really, again, similarly to what I was just describing with Leverkusen, I think that 
Aston Villa are really going to get in amongst it this season and cause some problems for some of the more established teams. And John McGinn is going to be getting right in amongst that, like a dug eaten beetroot. Now, Pablo Ruiz is, again, very similar to Fontas, who featured in this video as well. One of these guys who's always coming up in best value pick under budget players on Soria because he, he really is the epitome of it. His L15 and L5 are basically a mirror image. He's £10 at the moment for a limited. Even a rare at £118. If you're starting out, that is a great value for a guy that can drop scores like this on a ever improving Real Salt Lake under Pablo Mastroioni. Now, Real Salt Lake, for as long as I've been aware of MLS, like they sometimes have punched above their weight and have had some creative projects on the go. Don't get me wrong, but they never have much glamour. They never really get DPs in. They never really push the boat out. But this RSL outfit at the moment are going new gen, are going for the 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 new century approach, as it were. Now, Pablo Ruiz has been in, where is Salt Lake? Idaho? Ohio? Wherever it is. Salt Lake City. Where is that? For like three or four seasons, ever since MLS has been on so rare, this guy's had cards and this guy's been at RSL. And at 24 years of age, he knows the league. He's well walked and established. He's been at every ground, been beaten off them all, beat by a lot of them. Scored goals, made assists. The guy's got a very credible track record. And his track record is so robust. He feels very steady to predict and to forecast and to be a guy you can lean on and say, okay, I can expect a level of scoring out of Pablo Ruiz. And a lot of guys love him for that. Now, Jamie Vardy is the maybe the shout for old gold of the season. Leicester are back in the championship, which we know is going to be a great fixture. Listen, Jamie Vardy will be a tip for a lot of people to probably be golden boot or to get right in amongst that certainly anyway. Leicester will want to bounce back in on the first ask like we spoke about with Leeds United already. And Jamie Vardy should be playing a pivotal part of that for Leicester and I'm sure he would love to go and win another title to add to his, you know, his, his legacy. Will we get vintage Vardy? Will we get 70 pluses and the odd 90 and 80 and stuff like that? I'm not too sure. I think you can probably quite, rely quite reliably suggest you'll get 60s and 35 40s i think you'll probably play quite a lot with some of the sales and such that leicester will be making i think you'll feature in every game may not necessarily start but it feels like it could be a great cap player option who could be a, a 35 or 60 play the reason that's good is kind of twofold number one you've got the potential of a guy who genuinely could score 60 points in a split second no matter when they come onto the pitch and the other part of that that's really good is for the times that they don't. If he comes off the bench, he's only going to get 25 points and that's always going to hold his score and his cap value down. So a guy like Jamie Vardy, who might seem problematic at first when you actually think about it, there's a great strategy play for some galleries out there for something like Jamie Vardy. And for the price of £7, there's worse guys you could be backing. Now Lars Stindl is set to be the D2 Kimmich. He is set to be one of the cheat code cards of the season, as soon as the transfer was announced, that he was leaving Gladbach and he was going to go back to Karlsruhe, his hometown club or whatever it is, people were running to the market to buy Lars Stindels and scoop them up in the hope that he is going to be next season's Wanizek. And I can see why. His L5 a 65, L15 a 48. His limited is still only £15. And I say he's 34, he's my age. <laughs> £118 for a rare, maybe that's commensary, maybe there's a wee bit of risk involved, is he actually going to deliver those peak scores, the market's still waiting to see that, he can do these scores in the Bundesliga proper, so doing it in Bundesliga 2, I don't think it's much of a question for a guy of the calibre of Lars Stindl, who is also a dead ball player as well, can take set pieces, so I think at 34, again if you're looking for a guy who could really push a team over the top at under £16, uh, limited it is again I think Lars Stindl would have to join Jonas Hoffman is one of the best shouts we've had and one of the things I've enjoyed about being a Soraya manager in this transfer window is that you see a lovely kind of stepping stone process of some guys in their career like Orkan Kocu goes to you know comes through at Feyenoord makes a bit of a name for himself moves on to Benfica Feyenoord then go around and they sign up Ramiz Zaruki from 20 and last season 20 were one of the power player alternative strategy stacks that really came in in a big way and Zeruki was a big part of that so to see his career kind of move on to finer I think so rare scouts and managers are crossing their fingers and toes that there's a rookie has just had a massive power up a massive boost and output potential with the move to finer to in the league and whatever should in theory be better than 20. 
All of his statistics are fantastic. At 20, he was the main man. Just under £33 at the moment. I think you're very firmly getting value for money in Zuruki here, but you're not going to be getting him cheap, you know. So he is one of those guys that uh, I think for the price you get him for, you know what you're buying when you get him. And equally, the prices that you're getting him for at the moment, the scores you're going to get for it and how good that can make your team on the leaderboard, I think it's roundabout balance. So I think he's quite fair value. I don't think he's undervalued, certainly. But I do think at the age of 25, how much of a known quantity is playing in the Eredivisie already. And even with 20, juggling midweek and weekend football last year, he's very well versed at the whole scenario. I don't know why I said that weird there, sorry. At Feyenoord. So I think Rami Zuruki is a great midfielder card and he really is one that would put a team over the top and get you into the top end of the leaderboard, into the top end of the prize pools. And I think for completing this series, he is definitely a contender. Now, Robin Nock here is a very prominent figure on budget videos and all the rest of it. And I do like him and he could complete this final 10 because he is under £10 and his scores are really formidable. There's no two ways about it. But I think for some of the value we're getting under £10 already, I think we can get guys that are younger. Can we get guys that can do 90s and 100s? That's the kind of question. But I'm always a bit tentative with some of these German league guys, particularly Union Berlin, who are recruiting very well. And you know, moving to a higher and higher level. They're fighting higher and higher at the table. They're playing in midweek, so doing all this kind of stuff as well. And I always just get worried about some of those guys maybe from season to season. But under £10, if you need Bundesliga defence, this guy is 100 capable, and that's really hard to find under £10. Now, Majeke has been held out by a lot of people as a cross-your-fingers hope for a starting goalkeeper next year. And Monaco have been busy in the transfer market, so if it is Monaco you're thinking about, I'm not too sure if I'd be holding my breath on it just yet. Always capable of getting a loan, this guy. At £18, it's maybe one I would just be holding fire on just now. He can score well. He did well when he was in Belgium, of course. So I don't think he's going to be a guy, if he did sit on the bench for a season or for six months, you need to worry about because I think he would return to a first team near you at some point, but not for me then now. Now, Cristiano Beraghi was nominated about three or four times for this video and it really caught my attention. He's 30 years of age, he's under £7 for Unlimited at the moment and his scores are really good, it must be said. Fiorentina are going to be playing in Europe next year because Juventus have been forced to withdraw, they've been kicked out of the Conference League and Fiorentina are going to, you know, be the benefactors of that. So, Beraghi here... If he's on to have another season playing, you know, because Fiorentina are conference league finalists, don't forget. It looks like he's on to have the same season again, basically playing midweeks and weekend for a Fiorentina team that will be upper mid-table and maybe get it far in the conference league again. And if he can get in our four 100s, I think a lot of holders will be really happy. Uh, and again, under £7, that's, uh, that's hard to turn down, I think, isn't it? And that's a great guy that would complement this kind of beginner, the best 10 cars to start with today, because that's a lovely portion of really cheap, great utility, multi-100 capable guy. Now, we had John McGinn mentioned earlier on, and I thought the person nominating him was maybe trying to go for the, we'll get Quinny to pick this guy uh, approach, and maybe that's the same here for Andy Robertson. Robbo, but one of the best left backs in the world, £16 at the moment, and I think he's going to be in Liverpool's best defence this year. He will rotate with Simicast once in a while, so maybe picking up a wee cheap Simicast if you want a Robbo is always a good idea. Um, but yeah, I just think at Liverpool, he's probably on for somewhat diminishing returns. Like, he's probably... He's probably going to get this kind of, how many 70 pluses have we got here? About half a dozen. He's probably going to repeat that again. But with international duty, with midweeks, I've got a Robbo. I'm really excited for this season. Don't get me wrong. But at £16, it's, it's really hard to get excited for in this video. And I'm kind of in the same boat and I'm really undecided with so rare kind of cult figure, cult hero, Arthur Tiate. Now, now Tiate has been on the radar as so rare scouts and managers for a few years and he's had a few interesting transfers and currently at Wren, at 32, 33 pound, he's under 23 for a you know, for another season, right? He's got some banging scores here, you know, for Belgium against Estonia. And then a 4-0 win against Twa, where he gets a goal, right? But, and I know he's good, I've seen him play, I know he is good. But at 30 plus pound, I don't think I can get behind a Tiati. And Matty Kennedy probably represents the best bang for buck on the video. This guy was pretty good at Aberdeen. He's moved to Kilmarnock and he is 59 pence for Unlimited. The Northern Irishman is not bad either. He was just a little bit injured. <laughs> just not getting played. But he's a pretty good player. And if he was to play every week for Kilmarnock, he will be worth way more than 50p really quickly. 
I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. On screen now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.